The job of Genius Tools Model Processor is to perform time-consuming tasks that would typically take multiple strategies and button sequences within Creo. We use Genius Tools Model Processor for data cleanup, automating Creo functionality, and data prep for import into PLM systems. There are over 180 actions at your fingertips for performing these types of tasks. Genius Tools Model Processor comes in three different flavors. Model Processor User, where we create tasks, expose them to the users, but Model Processor User is limited in scope. Those tasks can only be applied to the current model and their submodels. There's Model Processor Rework, where all of the tasks are available to you, but the scope is expanded to not only the current models and their submodels, all objects in current session or all objects in workspace, also batch mode to where I can select entire PDM folders or file system folders. The third flavor is model processor report. In this version, we can create all of our tasks, but we are limited to only reporting functionality, not actual model manipulation. Let's see how Genius Tools model processor works. In this demo, we're gonna cover two different scenarios. The first one, we'll take a Creo part and we absorb that part from a customer or a company that we bought. There are a bunch of parameters that are there that we don't wanna use. The second scenario is where we will open a Creo sheet metal part. We wanna create a DXF of the flat, but what we don't wanna do is have the users create the flat, then create the drawing, and then export the drawing as the DXF. We're gonna do that all from within model processor. Let's go through the first scenario. We have a typical Creo part, nothing fancy about it. If we come up and look at our parameters, we have a bunch of parameters. If you've watched any of the other videos, you'll recognize some of these parameters that we're using. We want to get rid of all of these parameters except for mass. This is a task that can easily be done within model processor. Now, you'll notice at the top, you'll see model processor. This is pretty much the user look of model processor. We can create these series of tasks and put them as map keys so they can be ran within model processor. But the actual development of these tasks is done out of this interface right here. And this interface, what we wanna do, like we talked about, is we wanna come in and delete all those parameters. I'm gonna do this in the current model. And like I talked about before, here's the current model, which is obviously the one we were looking at, that guy right there. We have all in, all in session, or all in a workspace on what type of files we wanna work on. And then in batch mode, where if I come batch mode, pick it, you'll notice that I can select entire folders from a PDM server or windchill, or entire folders from the file system. Let's back up. We're gonna start it in the current model. And all I'm gonna do here is I want to add a specific task. Here are all of the 180 tasks that you have available to you. And while obviously we can't go through them all, let's go through model parameters. I want to delete a model parameter. How do you want to identify what parameter that you want to delete? If I come over here into the help button, what you'll see are regular expressions inside the help for model processor. And this allows us to type in typical expressions that we can use to perform these tasks. So in this scenario, we want to delete parameters except for the mass parameter. I'll go ahead and copy this guy. Paste that in. In this case, we'll get rid of that and say, we want to get rid of everything except mass. Add task and edit. Now, in most cases, we could just give this to the user and they could run this. But in this situation, we're going to go ahead and just say, we want to run this on the current model. Again, let's take a quick look. We'll see that tools, parameters, here's all our parameters that we're going to delete except for mass. Come back to model processor, hit, hit the go button. And what you'll notice is that all the parameters except for mass have been deleted. The ability to manipulate obviously one, but the power to be, manipulate thousands of parts becomes extremely useful. 
The second scenario that I already have built for you is where we are going to take a Creole sheet metal part, there it is, and we're going to apply a different model processor task to it. I've already built this out. So that right there. Actually, we don't want to say that. There it is. So we have a number of different things that are going on. First thing that we're going to do is request that the user decides what type of flat they want to create. Is it going to be a flat instance? Is it going to be a simplified rep? Or do they not want to create a either of them? Do they just want to take the folded or the bent model and create a DXF directly from it? We then have map keys that actually create either one. We're going to create the drawing. And then what we do is we export it. Let's see how this works. I'm going to drag this off to my other screen and hit the play button so you can see what happens within Creo. Play button. It asks me, do you want an instance? Do you want a simp rep? Sure, let's create the simp rep. There it is. We now have a simplified rep right there, a flat rep. And then I actually dropped that DXF into my temp folder. There it is, part two DXF. This is the things that we can do. I also, if I wanted to, could have took that part and that DXF and put them into windchill. If you notice within the model processor interface, Get rid of some of this. There it is. What I took off, or essentially what I said don't run, is add the file to workspace. Not only could we have added it to workspace, but we also could have checked in the DXF as secondary content. There are infinite possibilities that you have with Model Processor. If you would like to learn more about Genius Tools Model Processor or any of the other Genius Tools apps, please feel free to reach out at any time.